Today's video starts on page 15 in your packet. Um, it starts with a problem of the day. I'm going to leave the majority of page 15 and 16 for you to do on your own. Now remember, we're doing the distributive property here and a couple hints. Put a negative 1 in front of this and distribute negative 1. Make sure you understand that in letter C that that's negative 3 that distributes to these terms. And in letter D, please do not subtract 14, take away 2 first. Distribute that negative 2 to these terms and bring down everything else and then um, put together like terms, combine like terms. Now, um, I'm going to let you answer these four questions for the polynomial 4xy plus 6y negative 8xy. Um, number of terms, number of like terms, name of numerical coefficient, name of the constants. I'm going to do the same four questions for these terms down here, these polynomials down at the bottom. So how many terms are in 7x plus 3y minus 7? There are three terms. Uh, the name of like terms, there aren't any. X is not like Y is not like the numerical constant negative 7. Um, number, or, so there is none. I'm just going to say none. And there's lines here. Uh, name of the numerical coefficients. Well, the numerical coefficients are 7 and 3. That negative 7 is a number constant, not a numerical coefficient. Name the constants, negative 7. Same thing in this binomial, x plus y. The number of terms is 2. In the name of like terms, there are none. One's an x, one's a y. Uh, the name of a numerical coefficient, these both have a 1. Yes, it's 1x and 1y. They're not there, but yes, you could put them there. Um, and the name of any constants, there are none. No constants in that binomial. Let's go on to page 16. You're going to do the majority of this page by yourself in question 4, A, B, C, and D. Since there are not algebra, no variable terms in it, you can combine the like terms, the numbers, in the parentheses first and then simplify In number one, you're going to add or subtract um, the sum of a whole number and a uh, fraction, rational number, to make it one simplified rational number. Now this uh, direction above here, I am going to do these four questions. Rewrite each of the following to show that the opposite of a sum, the opposite of a sum, the opposite of a sum is the same as the sum, the sum of the opposites. So here's the sum of the opposites, the opposite of a sum. So, and it says uh, problem two, this would be a two here, has been completed as an example. So here you would do the parentheses first. 9 plus 8 is 17. Take its opposite as negative 17. If I distributed that negative to the 9 and to the 8, I would have negative 9 plus negative 8. So I'm taking the sum of the opposites. So I'm summing after I took the opposite first. So negative 9 and negative 8 makes negative 17. So yes, you will get the same thing. So I'm going to show the opposite of a sum. So I'm going to sum in my parentheses first, which is 6 and a fourth, and then take its opposite, the opposite of a sum. So I did that part. Is the same as the sum of the opposites. Now on this side, I'm going to distribute this negative. So that becomes a negative 1 fourth. Remember, that's a negative 1 out there, times negative 1 times Positive 6 would be negative 6. Now I'm going to, same signs, add and keep. Negative 1 fourth and negative 6 is negative 6 and 1 fourth. 
So then I did the sum of the opposites. I summed them because same signs add and keep. Keep the negative 6 and 1 fourth. Okay, um, do the opposite of a sum. So the parentheses is 10 plus negative 6. Different signs subtract and then take the opposite of that. I would get 4. 10 plus negative 6 is positive 4. Take its opposite, negative 4. Now I'm going to distribute this negative 1 and show you that you're going to get the same answer. So negative 1 times 10 would be negative 10. And negative 1 times negative 6 would be positive 6. Now I'm going to do the sum of the opposites. Uh, negative 10 plus 6 would give me different signs subtract. I would get a 4, negative 4. And yes, negative 4 does equal negative 4. So the opposite of a sum is the sum of the opposites. And the last one here, I'm going to do the opposite of this sum. So I'm going to sum first. Negative 55 plus a half. Different signs subtract, so 55 take away half is 54 and a half. Take the sign of the larger number, so that would be negative 54 and a half, but this says take the opposite of that, so it would be positive 54 and a half. Now I'm going to distribute this negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 55 would be positive 55, and negative 1 times positive 1 half Oop, going off the screen here. I have to move this over a little bit. So here I did have negative 54 and a half equals ne uh, positive 55. And negative 1 times positive 1 half would be negative 1 half. Different signs subtract. So I would get 54 and a half. So, oh, here I had negative 55 plus a half would give me negative 54 and a half take its opposite is positive 54 and a half. So the opposite of the sum is positive 54 and a half and the sum of the opposites is also positive 54 and a half. So proving that the opposite of a sum is the sum of the opposites. It's showing you that having a negative in front of a set of parentheses is like changing it to add the opposite, the sum of the opposites. Um, so, or multiplying by negative 1 is like changing everything in the parentheses after it to its opposite. So that's what goes on in this lesson, um, adding and subtracting algebraic expressions. Now remember, this is the 7th grade text, and we're in chapter 3, chapter 3 in the 7th grade text. And we're doing 3, 2, 3, 3, and 3, 4 now, so please make note of this on your notes. Sometimes you may need to add or subtract algebraic expressions. When you're doing so, remember that you can only add and subtract like terms. You know that subtracting a rational number is the same as adding its opposite. Likewise, subtracting an algebraic expression is the same as adding its opposite. So we may have a quantity, a couple numbers, a binomial that we're subtracting. Number properties such as the commutative property, the associative property can help you add or subtract algebraic expressions, and the distributive property can help you expand algebraic expressions or factor them. So subtract the binomial 2x plus 3 minus the binomial x plus 4. We'll re the, rewrite the problem as an addition problem. So they're asking you to distribute this negative 1 to the x plus 4. And you can see that distributing that gives us a negative x plus a negative 4. So the sum of the binomial 2x plus 3 um, minus x, the, the binomial x plus 4 equals the binomial 2x plus 3 plus negative x plus negative 4. Now use, you know, the commutative properties, change the order, use the associative properties, put the x terms together, and I don't do all this work. I don't show it in multiple steps like this. I just underline and say, oh, 2x minus x gives me a x, and positive 3 and negative 4 gives me a negative 1. So yes, it really is in my head I'm putting like terms together by using the commutative and the associative properties. So the difference of the binomial 2x plus 3 
minus the binomial x plus 4 is the answer x minus 1. I'm not going to do all these steps. You'll see. But they do show it to you a couple times, so you get the idea. You're really using those excellent properties to do this. An equilateral triangle ooh, has three sides, each measuring 2n plus 3 feet. What is the perimeter of this triangle? So to find the perimeter, because it's an equilateral triangle, and they're all 2n plus 3, um, you can see that you're going to add those three things together. So using properties, let's put all the, and I don't really do this. I don't write it all out like this. I don't say, okay, I'm going to add, this is what I do. 2n plus 2n plus 2n gives me 6n. And positive 3 and positive 3 and positive 3. So grouping those together, you get plus 9. So they're going to group all the 2n's together and all the threes together, and yes, the triangle's feet, um, answer, the perimeter of the triangle is 6n plus 9 quantity feet. I said quantity because, yes, you have to put parentheses around this. It's not 6n plus 9 feet. The feet also goes on the 6n, so you have to put that in parentheses to label that correctly. Find the sum of 3 times the quantity x plus 6 plus 3 plus 9y, that quantity. Then factor the sum. Um, actually, they didn't factor this, so we're going to leave this to another time. I'm going to cross that off. Please cross that off. Expand the first part of the expression. So do the distributive property. 3 times x is 3x, right? And 3 times 6 is 18. So uh, I have 3x plus 18 plus 3 plus 9y. So I'm going to use the properties and put like things together. So 3x plus 18 plus 3 plus 9y. Well, the only thing that can be grouped together is that 18 and that 3. So they're like terms, and they equal 21. There is nothing like 3x or 9y. They don't have like terms. So my answer best form would be... 3x plus 9y, put your algebra terms first, plus 21. So yes, in the examples they do all of those steps. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to add like terms by do, using the associative property in my head. So 2x plus 3x, that gives me 5x. And negative 4 plus positive 7 Different sign, subtract. So 7 take away 4 is positive 3. And I get 5x plus 3. Um, now here, because it's a subtraction binomials, negative 7x minus 4, that quantity, minus the quantity 5x minus 7, I have to distribute this negative 1 to all the terms that are in the parentheses that follow it. So I'm going to rewrite my first binomial. I really don't need parentheses around it. And now I'm going to distribute negative 1 times 5x is negative 5x, and negative 1 times negative 7 is positive 7. Now I'll put my like terms together. Uh, negative 7x and negative 5x, same signs add and keep, gives me negative 12x, and negative 4 and positive 7, 7 take away 4 is positive 3, negative 12x plus 3. And that's it for today's video.